Hello there. Welcome back to the booth here at Mythic Championship 2 from London. That's Paul Chiano, Marshall Sutcliffe. Welcome. It is the early morning start here to day number two. This is where things get really exciting at the end of day one. Who's going to be undefeated? How are things going to go from there? And now we kind of ease our way back in, but make no mistake. These early rounds are just as important as the later ones. Every win counting, and you know what? Even more importantly, every loss counting. You just don't have that much wiggle room. When the players get back to the constructed portion, they feel that they have a lot more control over what they're doing. They know their deck, they know the matchups, they could have put in a lot more time to prepare. Here, well, there's an element of luck here. What you open up in these booster packs and how you navigate them is gonna have a big effect on your tournament, especially if you're that man right there, Olivier Ruel, who's in a beautiful position to make a run for top eight here, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, this is a brand new format, right? We saw kind of the first draft yesterday. And uh, this is, I feel, however, the best place for you to get an edge um, coming in because, yes. you know, this since the format is so new, if you put in the right amount of preparation, this is where you can truly, you know, have a much higher win rate for ex than, for example, Modern, where, you know, it's a known format, people know. And taking a look here, Naheb, Dreadhorde Champion, I'm sure you have to do a lot of preparation to take a four mana 5 4 <laughs> Trampler. Uh, seems like a totally reasonable card. Uh, I, I was going to say, it looks like uh, this one's a little easier here for yeah. Olivier. Picks up the nice one to have Dreadhorde Champion. Also, competing for uh, potential picks here, though, is Ajaya's greeting in the pack. Now, you're not going to take that over Neheb, but it is interesting to note that he's passing that down the, down the way. Yeah, absolutely. Both uh, Jaya's greeting and Wanderer's Strike, very strong cards. Some of the more powerful removal spells. Uh, Jaya's greeting, uh, probably one of the best spells uh, at common uh, next to Obnix, Alyssa's Cruelty. Wanderer's Strike, of course, not bad as well. But, of course, you're not you know going to be too sad first picking Neheb, Dreadhorde Champion here. 4-mana 5-4 Trampler. Also, when it connects, uh, it has the ability for you to kind of filter through some, some bad cards, get generate you some mana. So Yeah, it's kind of a cool extra ability, but the truth of the matter is we're talking about a 4-mana 5-4 Trampler right. in his heart here, and that, that's that's the power. Absolutely. Wow, another red rare here. <clears throat> that's a Dreadhard Arcanist <clears throat> now for Olivia. He's going to take a quick read. This card's not as uh, straightforward as Nahab. Yeah, absolutely. So 2-mana 1-3 Trample. There is a ton of upside, however for something like the Dreadhorde Arcanist, where if you do pick up cards like Jaya's Greeting, two mana removal effects, and have ways to pump the Dreadhorde, Dreadhorde Arcanist, it can give you a lot of value. I mean, the floor on this, two mana, one, three trample, not great. Of course, you know, a one power trampler is not gonna be doing you a whole lot, but of course, um, you know, it does have a lot of upside. However, there's also cards like Nahiri, Storm of Stone. Polymbright Druid is also very, very powerful. This, you know, th this type of effect you've seen in a lot of different formats. Two mana, one, one that puts a counter on something. But in this format specifically, it's one of the best green commons, actually, because you can, because of the proliferate mechanic, the fact that you can have a two mana creature uh, just naturally grow by putting plus one, plus one counters on things uh, just gives you a lot more upside there. All right, let's take a look at the third pick here from Olivier. He's got Invading Manticore uh, pulled to the, or Ooh. took a moment on that one. Ooh, okay. Johnny's pride mate. Yeah, I really hope the Dread or Arcanist doesn't start influencing all of the picks that Olivier makes. It, it wants to be in blue, is that? I believe What's so. What's the other best color for a Dreadhorde Arcanist? Well, the thing is, you want to if you put it in a in a color combination where you can put plus one plus one counters on the Arcanist, the value is so much higher the moment you can start getting two mana cards. Okay. So, ex for example, a card like as you can see on the screen there, Iron Bully. If you could which, put up which he took. Oh wow! Yeah, good pick. <laughs> he if you third could, picked an if Iron you could, Bully over that, on Crop That is Invader. incredible. If you put a plus one plus one counter on it, it starts doing a lot of work. Because also in red, there's three two mana removal spells actually Chandra's Pyro Helix, Jaya's Greeting, and uh, Heartfire. Yeah, he's right? actually passed two of those three. Right. He passed a Heartfire as well. That is. Iron Bully is not the type of car that you're ever happy third picking. And there were a lot of different options there for Olivia, but it looks like he's really trying to kind of go hard on the, the Dreadhorde Arcanist here. He took a Cron Trangler here. So perhaps. Uh, deviating over into green-red, which would let him put counters on that uh, Arcanist as well. Yeah, absolutely. But this is a fifth pick Wanderer Strike, and now we're going to be... Oh! <laughs> Niv-Mizzet Reborn, is it time to go deep? I mean, it is an incredibly powerful card, but I don't know if you necessarily want to start the draft out by taking Niv-Mizzet Reborn, especially because you're not going to get a ton of the gold cards. Now, Chandra's Pyro Helix in the pack 
Wanderer Strike, I think, is a stronger card, but Olivia really trying his best to cut as much red as possible. Chandra's Pyro Helix, of course, working well with Dreadhorde Darkness if you can find ways to put plus one, plus one counters on it, like the card Iron Bully that he took. Uh, third pick? Wow. Third pick Iron Bully. Uh, Niv Mizzet Reborn, by the way, was played yesterday. I know that, uh, that Dmitry Budakov had it in his deck mm -hmm. and went deep. There's a Giant Growth. That's a card from... Olivier's days. <laughs> <laughs> Spin around. Yeah. Since, uh, I guess Alpha, right? It was, alpha. It was, it it was, was out in, in the original yeah. original set. So a few options here. If Olivier wanted to go into red green with the Crunch Wrangler, Giant Growth is actually a nice spell to get back with the Dreadhorde Arcanus because it is a one casting cost spell. Yeah, I would take it here, but it looks like he's going to go for Honor the God Pharaoh, which is a kind of a card filtering effect. He doesn't seem especially happy so far, but he if there is one thing he's doing, he's cutting red he hard. He is cutting red really hard, yeah. And it does seem to me that white might be a little bit open here. We've seen several Divine Arrows going around in the pack, and also a Wanderer Strike that, that was in the pack about fifth or sixth, so... He doesn't like Oncrop Invader. Right. He, he, he had a chance to take one um, over that Iron Bully and didn't. I think he just doesn't like the card. Yeah, and on crop invader. I mean, if you're a, if you're aggressive, the card is totally I'd, fine. I'd play it. It's a three mana two two that has first strike on your turn, and um, you know, oftentimes there's just enough sacrifice fodder that uh, it's just extremely difficult to block. He took the spinner there, so he is now kind of leaning harder over. There's another Crown Wrangler into red green. What would you? How would you describe the red green archetype in uh, War of the Spark? Uh, much like a gruel in RNA, it's just looking to beat down. That's generally what Beefy. Red Green. Yeah, that's generally what Red Green wants to do. Just kind of have the best rate creatures in terms of power and toughness. So you know, cards like um, you know the 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 Crunch Wrangler, and then just playing a bunch of four power creatures to get it bigger uh, is kind of just what you want to be doing. He's going to take a quick look at Huatli, the Sun's Heart, though that is not what he wants to be doing in a deck like this, so he may just take the Cyborg card, Force Landing. Yeah, Force Landing is an excellent <coughs> Cyborg card. Lots of flyers in the set. Also, one of the few ways to deal with one of the gods in the set, it actually deals with Kefnet. Kefnet? Oh, <laughs> that's kind of nice. That was another Cron Trangler, I believe. He yep. snap picked it, and that would be his third one. Right, so now he's really looking wow. for those four power creatures. Yeah. You know, uh, he already has a Neheb, mm -hmm. but I think currently he's a little bit light on them. I agree. He's got all the Wrangle. He just needs some Crunch. Here's uh, Vivian's Grizzly. Fringe playable there for Olivier, and nothing really left to, to round out the pack. So, this pack started off with some fireworks, a couple of red rares for Olivier. Fell off very sharply after that, taking the Iron Bully with his next pick, and now seems to have roughly settled into green red. And we'll see how it goes from here. He really does need to see some raging crunches. I that think would raging, help out a lot. raging crunch, at least that common, is definitely the card that he wants to be seeing here, especially with three copies already of the Crunch Wrangler. They're kind of built for each other. They're kind of made for each other. They are indeed. So you have that. The Dreadhorde Arcanist does, still doesn't seem that impressive. I'm actually a little bit surprised, though, that Olivia chose not to take any giant growth. That giant growth looks so good with the Arcanist. It makes it so you don't have to work. Yeah, it's also great with Crunch Wrangler because it has trample, so sometimes you can just mm. get in for the last few points of damage. But, you know, Olivia did choose to try to cut red. I mean, to be, to be honest, it, doesn't, it didn't really seem like red was very open. He first picked Neheb. Uh, Dreadhorde Arcanist is not necessarily a sign that red is open because it is kind of a build-around card. And Chandra's Pyro Helix, it's a fine card, but it's not something that you're like, oh, red is definitely open because I saw Pyro Helix. Yeah, he opened Jaya's Greeting as well, so that's not a signal. He did get past a heart fire, but again, that, that, I, I don't yep. consider that a strong signal either. So We'll see how it goes from here uh, for Olivier. He really does need to get some high-powered creatures into this deck to make it go. He keeps reading the Dreadhorde Arcanist. <laughs> He's like, okay, so... Basically, it wants you to have one-drop instant or sorceries, ideally, and then maybe some twos in case you manage to get a counter onto it. Right, and the thing is, oftentimes, you're just not going to find a lot of one-mana instants or sorceries. So really, to, to kind of... Un unlock the potential for the Arcanist, you you really need to find a way to put a plus one, plus one counter on it, because once you go up to two, there's a lot more spells you can get mm -hmm. back. And as you mentioned, in red, there's tons. Yes. All right, here it is. Pack number two now for Olivier. Let's see what he finds. Uh, what's the play? Oh, oh, oh hello, Nissa. There, there you go. That is exactly <laughs> what you want to see. Nissa, who shakes the world. 
doubles your mana from green, turns your creatures into 3-3, three, three, or excuse me, your lands into 3-3 three, three creatures that are untapped, have haste, still lands. Also Vigilance. Yes. So yeah, well, uh, this very easy pick here. Uh, ban if, if Nissa was not in the pack, Olivia would have gone, uh, gone ahead and taken the band together. A very solid removal effect for green. But Nissa, of course, you're going to be slamming that, making an yeah. en endless stream of 3-3 three, three Vigilance creatures. And of course, if you have any mana sinks whatsoever, anytime you tap a force for mana, you can add an additional green. Yeah, and she comes down at a time where you do still have cards in your hand enough that you can play Nissa untap and, you know, sometimes play two very expensive spells. You know, a four drop exactly. and a five drop or a four drop and another four drop or something like that. Yeah. And Olivia in a position, you know, he actually has like a, a pretty, pretty nice curve, at least on the low end. He he just wants he just wants some crunches. Oh yeah, he just wants some, some large large creatures. Arches. Raging preferably. All right, fairly weak passion, pack so far. Heart fire, and there's a pond right during, and another Chandra's Pyrohelix. The Elder Spell is the rare, but that's so not he, castable here. He actually had a chance uh, to take Pollen Bright Druid earlier, which is actually very, very nice with the Dreadhorde Arcanist. And now that you've, uh, I believe he took Iron Bully over it, but now that you've settled into Red Green, you took that Nissa. I think uh, Pollen Bright Druid is the card that you want to take here. Yeah, that makes sense. And it, it just seems like a good card early, a good card late, and even has some bonus synergies in his deck. So yep. what's, what's not to like there? Yeah. He also already has one copy of... Chandra's Pyro Helix, and that is not the type of card that you'll take just as many as you can get. You know, it's nice to have one in your deck, but you don't necessarily need three or four. Exactly. And Pollen Bright Druid, totally fine card in Olivia's deck, at its best, of course, in the green white proliferate deck. But, you know, Olivia's got a few plus one, plus one counter synergies going on. So, you know, who knows? There might be times where he uses that proliferate effect to maybe get two plus one, plus one counters and divvy those up. Ugh. This is a very weak pack. Centaur Nurturer is the best card for him? Boy, no red cards whatsoever. I, I, or I shouldn't say that. There's a Goblin Assailant. But <laughs> no, he, no, no, no red cards whatsoever. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank okay, you, Paul, good. for the save there. Yeah. yeah, Centaur Nurturer looks like the pick. He's already got a Snare Spinner or two, so sure. But, you know, we are talking more about the beatdown, right? You know, when you look at the Centaur Nurturer, I think of more the black-green archetype rather right. than the red-green. Yeah, and, you know, he, I think you just take the Nurturer there because it's the only card that's going to plausibly make your deck. If somehow you don't get there with a four power theme, maybe th you then branch out into the backup plan of being some kind of green based deck with a lot of powerful spells. But, um, you know, it's pretty unlikely that Ooh, currently that is. it's going to make it into this deck. Oh Ooh, boy, wow, two what good a, what a choices pack. here. Yeah, he's got the Raging Crunch that he wanted, but there's also a very powerful Paradise Druid. Yeah, so normally I would go, you know, I, I believe many people be believe that the Paradise Druid is a stronger card. It's a two mana, two one, that has for any color. But this is exactly the card that Olivia wants. He has tr three copies of the Crunch Wrangler, and he has a big gaping hole at the three mana slot. So um, <laughs> he needs to... Get this Raging Crunch online with, of course, all of his two-mana creatures. So a good pickup here for Olivier. Perhaps he's had some experience drafting this archetype before. You know, he was taking those uh, Crunch Wranglers pretty high. <coughs> See if he can find himself some more beef. Yeah, Not a whole lot of power here. Yeah, what was that red card, the Manticore again? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I believe Boy. he's probably just... Maybe you just go ahead and take the Manticore. He still could use some cards at the top end of the mm -hmm. curve, but... He's going to take Divine Arrow here. Yeah, and uh, no white card. So, I mean, maybe if he gets, you know, uh, a, a little extra mana fixing, he, he branches out into three colors just for a little more interaction. You know, picking up some two or one mana spells, of course, is powerful with that Dreaded or Arcanist that he picked up. So I think this was maybe mostly a speculative pick, knowing that, you know, uh, if he does want to pick up a big six mana creature, he can probably get one at some point later in the draft. Boy, this is Triumph. Not really what he wants here. Steady aim, not even the combat trick of choice. What's nice is he actually has Nissa to go with this as Triumph. He does. But even when you do that, she's not going to really do a whole lot. Right. Yeah, and this is, this is Triumph, not the kind of thing you want. I would definitely just take Heartfire here if it were me. I don't think Steady Aim is really ever going to make the cut in his deck. And Heartfire at least gives you an out to uh, have a removal spell in a real pinch, right? If your opponent's playing something that you just don't have another answer for. Yeah, it looks like Olivia is just valuing the combat trick there. Yeah, interesting. So there's Bolt Bend and Samut's Sprint as options here. Look, we, we liked 
the giant growth earlier. Samud sprint is not giant growth. No. But maybe it's a thing. Yeah, I mean, in a pinch, if you do need a, a, a few combat tricks, it, it can it can maybe get the job done. And, uh, you know, if you are... It, with, with the red green deck, you do just want to have... Make sure you can just, like... You know, put a pressure on and have a handful of combat checks to attack through some annoying threats. He's got, he went but for the bolt bend. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Good good chance for some high upside there if he wants to bring it in. This Goblin is probably this here. is probably making it into his deck. Um, yeah, you know. the four power, right? Right. Wait, is, is is this just the 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 lesser crunch? Yeah, <laughs> the lesser crunch. <laughs> this is just the four, four <laughs> the the four power tribal deck here for Olivier. But yeah. you know, I, I feel like he really didn't get rewarded. I mean, it, it it felt like he just didn't get the red cards after trying his best to cut the red cards in pack one. And you know, given that we given what we saw in pack one, I don't think he's going to really get hooked up in pack three either. I'm surprised actually. Yeah. I I really did think that he would get more red cards here in the second pack, given how much he really did try. I mean. Right. He, the uh, a, a few of the picks were, you know, pretty borderline. But the benefit being, well, I'm cutting red at least. Yeah, I mean, one situation that I could see happening is, you know, in the pack that Olivier opened with Neheb, there was a Jaya's greeting, which was clearly the next best card in the pack. And if the person that he was passing to in pack one maybe opened a red card as well, it's really hard to go o away from that. Let's say you first pick Jaya's greeting, and somebody passes you another one. It is really difficult. To be like, oh, red's not open, you know, a after having those two Jaya's greetings in your in your deck. Yeah. Well, end of the pack here. Pack two. Which one is Fine. more annoying, the Bulwark Giant, maybe? Definitely. Yeah. If you're a four that's power, a kind of, yeah, it's a crunch eater. <laughs> right. right? I mean, if, if you're a, a four power tribal, then definitely the. I mean, four threes don't match up very well with three sixes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this pack really. I, I mean, it, it was, was it, it was very underwhelming. I mean, he got a, he got a raging crunch and a, and a Nissa basically as kind of the highlights of this pack. Yeah, Nissa of course was fantastic. Absolutely. That that was you know one of his best starts for this pack, but it quickly trailed off after that. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, so, so few cards. Oh, but there's a Pollen Bright Druid, I suppose, I mean, as well. Are we excited about that? No, I mean, nothing nothing especially exciting here. A heart fire that he just doesn't want to play. He, right. he really tried not to take it. I wonder if this Dreadhorde Arcanist kind of, you know, first pick, second pick, red rare, maybe that kind of put you, committed you into being red there. But, um, yeah, this this... This deck doesn't look uh, especially strong right now. I wouldn't be especially happy with what I have right now so far. I mean, obviously you have Anissa here, um, but you know he he is missing some 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 of the beefy creatures at three mana. Now, of course, things can change within in one pack. You know, let's say he picks up three raging crunches, um, that would help out certainly a lot. Th then his deck but, would be quite good. Yes, absolutely. As it stands, it's kind of in the middle, I would guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Right? I mean, it, there's it, some, certainly some highlights. He has Neheb and Nissa. I will say, though, you know, you also have to, I think we're kind of in a, a new world here where I, th I believe the, the overall power level of decks should be a little bit higher, mm. uh, especially because there is a, you know, uh, a premium common um, in every color. Yes. Uh, you know, we really have cards like, color. yeah, cards that we haven't seen in a long time. Cards like Obnixilis's Cruelty, Aven Eternal, Jaya's Greeting. All these cards are far more pushed than, than what we've seen before. And as a result, the average power level of all the decks should go up a little bit because everybody is going to have one, two, three copies of these cards in their deck. All right, let's see what he gets here. Oh, his rare is Soul Diviner. Hmm. Not and get the it Planeswalker done. is Teo, so that's not it. There's a Raging Crunch, though. Yep. We did it. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's the thing with the red-green deck. If you just can curve out nicely with just a bunch of large creatures, I mean, that's usually enough a lot of the time. So, yeah, I, I think Olivier should be... I mean, sure, sure, you didn't open a rare, but if, if you didn't, I mean, Raging Crunch is exactly what you want in your deck. Seems fine. I did not see that band together in the pack either. That certainly yeah. is a consideration, though at this point, he's kind of crunch committed. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I think typically, uh, at least early in the draft, you would look to take the band together. It is a very nice removal effect, especially in green, because you can target two things. So you, you know, oftentimes it's you know what we say it's a it's a three it's a murder basically in green, where it's a a three mana spell that just kills a creature 
uh, very, very often. But with, with Olivier's deck, you know, not having a lot of good threes and triple Crunch Wrangler, if he sees a, 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 a solid four power creature, he just needs to go ahead and take it. Right. Oh, two combat tricks at the back, Samut Sprint, and here he's Stone Blades. But that's not it. Yeah, the best cards here being Callus Dismissal, Flux Channeler, and a Johnny's Pride Mate. Right. None of those cards being in his color. He's considering taking Blast Zone, a pretty slow card. But, you know, if you can take a utility land and replace one of your lands with it, that is uh, some serious value. That means you get to play one more card than most people do. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think... Worth of spells. Yeah, for sure. And I think Blast Zone is the type of card that's a little bit better if you're a little more controlling, a little slower. I mean, I could see Olivia maybe consider the Iron Bully, but, you know, uh, yeah, the, I think his mana requirements are also pretty heavy. Keep in mind, it's not really free, especially if you have double red cards. He's got the Neheb in his deck, but he's also got three green two drops that he wants to play on turn mm -hmm. two. That's right. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it seems kind of rough. Speaking of seeming kind of rough, Arlen's Wolf and a Dreadhorde Twin. Fine, again, you know, I, I keep saying this, but the, the, the cards he's, he's picking up are, you know, we would describe them as playable to sometimes even kind of good. Yeah, yeah. But, ah, boy, he really just needs something to kind of tie this deck together. Right, exactly. I mean, you're not just seeing the top, you know. Arlen's Wolf is something that should be a card that's in your deck, but it's kind of in the bottom half of your deck. But right now, <laughs> it seems like it's just one of the better cards. So. Yeah. So, yeah, again, uh, nothing super exciting. Dreadhorde Twins, I think, is a stronger card. I'm not exactly sure what his curve looked like. You know, it, if he wanted more threes, he could have gone ahead and take that um, yeah, as well. That's probably what the consideration was. Also slightly awkward that Dreadhorde Twins is effectively four power for four mana, right. yet he it doesn't trigger. <laughs> okay, so we got a little more excitement here. We have a Paradise Druid and... Uh, Arlen, Voice of the Pack, yeah. as, as options here. Yeah, Arlen allows you to make effectively three three threes if left unchecked. Mm -hmm. And if you have any other random wolves, her, her uh, static ability could affect those as well. So if Olivier feels like his top end wants a little bit more punch, he could take an Arlen. Or I would be inclined to just take the Paradise Druid here myself. Right. I, th I think those are the options. Uh, Olivier is kind of light on uh, heavy expensive cards, but it looks like he just wants the Paradise Druid. It is a very strong card. Yeah, so. I mean, it's interesting because there's these six mana creatures that uh, you guys put in this set that are really quite strong, actually. Like, they, they look like just sort of replacement level uh, six mana commons, and they're not that far above that, but they're right. actually a bit better, you know? Yep. The Manticore that he picked up, for example, is two creatures in one. That's actually quite strong. Or even the Worm, you know, a six mana seven six. If you have a bunch of ways to ramp, it's, you know, totally fine, yeah. hard to have at the top of your curve. Yeah, we say that that has keyword big. Yeah, keyword keyword big. Mm -hmm. We decided to give Colossal Dreadmaw a little rest this time around and, you know, <laughs> replace Trample with uh, with an extra power. But he's not extinct, right? Yeah, well, you know, One we'll day? see. It depends on the plane we go to, I guess. <laughs> well, so far, <laughs> every plane we've gone to, <laughs> you walk around the corner and there's a Colossal Well, I mean, it, you know, it's the perfect magic card, so we... <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't, I, I didn't, nobody told me that. So. <laughs> That's a Chain Whip Cyclops there for... Uh, Olivier, and he's going to snap that one up, mainly because it's a four-powered creature, and uh, that can get his Crunch Wranglers going. Yeah, Chainwick Cyclops certainly not one of the creatures that you really want. It's uh, just very, very expensive. Five mana, four four is not really a great rate. So um, certainly, maybe you'll you'll play it if. If you really need that four power. Yeah, you know, but one interesting thing is, uh, well, A, he does need the four power. Right. <laughs> and B, you know, we did mention uh, Mana Sinks yep. earlier with Nyssa. And, you know, Chain Whip Cyclops could easily be put in a situation where it just ends the game. Yeah, so... so oh, Olivia, you got to pick one, buddy. Olivia deciding between this. Turd Ogre, certainly, uh, you know, actually quite solid. You know, it four is. mana for a 4-3 reach creature. And then also just... Gives you a little bit of extra reach on top of that because it does yeah. have the two damage effect. Yeah, he is really staying true to the Crunch Wranglers here right. and taking the as many four power creatures as possible. Uh, Giant Growth would have been pretty nice pickup there as well, but yeah. And he has another shot at one with the Goblin Assault team. Yeah, he's really going for kind of the synergy with, you know, kind of maximizing the power of the Crunch Wranglers in his deck. It is weird that you've made a format where he's passing a blue planeswalker and not really blinking about it. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, specifically for Narset, you do need a pretty high concentration Definitely. of uh, non-creature spells to actually reliably be able to hit with it. Here's Devouring Hellion. Uh, that might work. He can make that into a 4-4, right? He could. Just sacrifice any creature. Yeah, but I don't... He doesn't really have any creatures that are fodder for it, really. It's yeah. not great, you know. <laughs> you sack your Crotch Wrangler <laughs> to trigger your Crotch <laughs> yeah, Wrangler. Yeah. You know, maybe if he had a couple of Grim uh, Initiates in his deck or something, he could consider it. Yeah, Return to Nature, a, a great sideboard option here. It's a sweet little sideboard card there. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, update to better. the uh, Naturalize. Yeah. Yeah. You had a good run, Naturalize, but <laughs> the new kid's in town. Right. Oh, oh well, look at that. super late fourth <laughs> Cron Trangler here for Olivier. Do you so think anybody's been Look at him. Look at him. He's Crunch like, Wrangler. we did it, baby. <laughs> 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 oh, that is great look from him. Wait, didn't he? Oh, this is just, this is just bolt another bullpen. Bolt yeah. He's got two of those now. Yeah. And, you know... <laughs> I'm not like that card. If you get it to go, is right. completely absurd. Right. It's just very narrow. But you know what it cares about? Four power. Like right. it makes it just red, and that turns it from, you know, a card that you don't really want in your deck. Right? You, you can't leave up four mana that often to protect your creatures in a curve out deck. Right. But one mana, yeah. Especially when it says instead of you using one of your cards to kill one of my creatures, you're killing one of your creatures. That is a savage blowout. Yeah, if you can reliably cast it for yeah. one mana, I think there is a place for it. Um, I think oftentimes this is the type of card that you want to play in your sideboard against a deck with lots of removal spells. Yeah, black-white deck or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, may maybe if Olivia feels like he has a few playable short or, you know, thinks it's a going to overperform a bit, I could see playing one and then boarding the second one in. I think in this deck I would. Yeah. Like, he really did put as much effort as possible into getting as many four-powered creatures. He has four Crunch Wranglers and then all the four power he can get. He's basically playing a Ferocious deck at this point. Right. You know, I think I would just take... I mean, show me the deck that isn't playing something that's going to target my creatures. Right. Right. Now, generally, I agree with you that you'd prefer to have it be a deck where you know for sure or where it's going to come up often. Right. But it's limited. I mean, it's not like they're going to sit down and go, well, I'm playing a non-interactive combo deck. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. it's like... I'm not going to take this removal spell because I'm just going to do my thing. Yeah, I'm going to be right. doing my... It's yeah, a goldfish yeah. deck. Right, He'll right. be sitting over there <laughs> and I'll be over here. So... We've got uh, Rich and Maria at the news desk to recap. And, of course, we're going to be covering another draft. But first, these messages. <laughs> 